Hi, I'm Forrest. Thanks for joining me. In this video, I introduce a new series of books called Puzzle Play that teach the art of arranging in a step-by-step -step way, much like this drawing shows how to draw rows in a step-by-step -step way. Puzzle Play is so new that I'm still working on book two at the time I'm making this video. It should be out sometime in mid-2018. Eventually, the series is going to have six books. Playing chords and making arrangements and accompaniments begins with Puzzle Play 1. However, not everyone is ready to jump in and do this, so I created a prep book for beginners. With this book, beginners can learn to play simple, well-known tunes by ear and do short activities that prepare them for Book 1. Let's go through a chapter to give you a sense of this book. This one is focused on the tune Happy Birthday because it's the world's best known tune. First, the student learns about the life of the tune, its birth and how it became so popular. Then the student begins the first puzzle called Finding the Tune. With the teacher's help, the student is encouraged to start on G and find the tune by ear, not by rote and not by reading. This is the most natural and musical way of developing and training the ear and also developing a sense of phrasing. This is how Clara Schumann was taught when she was five. The student is given an outline of the song to help guide him or her at home and be able to connect the notes to visual symbols. The student is encouraged to play the tune with either the left or the right hand. When the student turns the page or any page in the book, they will see a black puzzle piece. This symbol means that the musical example to follow is one possible solution to the puzzle. And so here we see the tune written out. The student learns to appreciate the usefulness of notation and trust his or her ear. Puzzle 2 explores different ways of playing the melody to create different characters. The student is encouraged to start on different G's in different ranges of the piano to create different moods and also use different dynamics. Turn the page and there are three examples showing different ways of playing the tune. First, softly in a higher range. Then, loudly in a deep range. And finally, both soft and loud in alternating phrases. So even at this basic level, the student begins thinking like an arranger, using different ranges and dynamics, like so many paintbrushes. Puzzle 3 is called Conversations. Students are asked to play a phrase with one hand, then the next phrase with the other hand to make a conversation. This helps the student not only begin to coordinate the two sides of the body, but better understand the whole idea of phrasing. Then the student is encouraged to discover how to play the tune starting on D and then C. This sort of simple transposing is such a natural and practical way to develop the ear. Then the student is again encouraged to play the melody in different ways to reveal different characters. Then the student is asked to add either C or G in the bass. They're given the simple choice to develop their confidence. So now the right hand plays the melody while the left hand plays the bass. It's not that hard to do, yet it sounds quite full. Puzzle 6 is about doing this in the key of G. In Puzzle 7, the student adds the note a fifth above the bass note and does this in different ranges of the piano. This prepares the hand and the ear to play chords. And then in Puzzle 8, the student is asked to add a note in the middle of the fifth to make a chord, and then to play these chords instead of the fifths. And in puzzle nine, to do this in the key of G and hear what chords sound like in a different range of the piano. So here the idea of one, four, five chords is introduced. The student is now ready to begin the art of arranging with chords because they can play a melody and add simple block chords in two different keys. In this prep book, there are seven other melodies that the student can learn in a similar way. It's not necessary to learn them all, but I do suggest learning at least four of them before stepping into book one. As you can see, book one has two parts, one A and one B. 
The first part, 1A, explores solo piano playing, while 1B explores how to make accompaniments so that a person can play with other human beings or accompany themselves when singing or writing songs. Book 1 works mostly with these six basic triads in the key of C, three major and three minor triads, and the same thing in the key of G. Even when playing with this small amount of notes, the possibilities are endless. There are eight sections in Book 1A. The first three explore styling, substituting, and coloring, the basic three techniques of arranging. Later sections explore how to play with inverted chords and how to play suspended chords, and how to arrange in boogie-woogie style and ragtime style at a beginning level. Like the prep book, the first section begins with the most familiar tune there is. Puzzle 1 explores the sounds of block chords played in various ranges of the piano. Puzzle 2, called Beethoven's Birthday, explores playing chords in a driving rhythm, while Birthday Waltz breaks up the chords to make a waltz-like accompaniment. Puzzle 4, Mozart's Birthday, breaks up the chords in the mid-range of the piano. while Puzzle 5, Walking Bass, explores broken chords played way down in the bass. So much can be done with blocked and broken chords played in various rhythms and ranges of the piano. In the next section, six puzzles explore ways to substitute minor chords for the usual major chords in the song Amazing Grace. The third section has five puzzles that explore how to add color tones to chords, that is, how to add seconds and sevenths and play them in various styles. Green Sleeves and Scarborough Fair, two timeless folk songs, are explored in this section. The reading level is kept at a pretty basic level in this book. This is about as hard as it gets. Later in the book, inversions are introduced and they're explored further with the chords in canon and D. Suspended chords are introduced and used. Later, there's a section which explores how to make a simple boogie-woogie arrangement. Puzzle 3 explores making syncopated melodies, while Puzzle 4 explores adding blue notes. The last section in the book explores how to arrange in a simple ragtime style. Puzzle 2 in this section explores ways to play the melody with syncopated rhythms. And Puzzle 3 explores how to add finishing touches such as introductions, fills, and an ending. Part B of Book 1 is all about making full sounding accompaniments using triads and dominant seventh chords. After a section that teaches the basic accompaniment hand position, the next three sections explore the three main arranging techniques, styling, subbing, and coloring, using right hand chords. The last two sections emphasize the left hand and how to make a variety of interesting bass lines. To give you a little more detail, in the first section we learn how to play chords in basic accompaniment position, and we again begin with happy birthday as a point of reference and then learn about inverting the right hand chords and other topics. In the second section on styling, we begin by working with lyric sheets, and these show just the lyrics and chords of the song. This is commonly done in praise bands and other kinds of bands. Because no notes are used, this form of communication doesn't violate copyright issues, so most familiar songs are available for free in this form on the internet. So we can begin by playing the chords in some classic pop songs, such as the Beatles' Let It Be. This song uses just four chords. In Puzzle 2, we learn about playing with backbeats. And creating more interesting bass lines using connecting notes. and about making simple fills with the right hand. The second section of the book is all about substituting or subbing. 
We return to the ideas presented in part A of this book, but we're now playing them in the accompaniment style. We then explore in the third section adding color tones to chords in the accompaniment position, beginning with add two chords. The last two sections in the book focus on the left hand and on creating more interesting bass lines. For example, in Puzzle 3, we learn about alternating between the root and the fifth of the chord in the bass, and then adding connecting notes between the root and fifth. Then we change the rhythm to make a wall style accompaniment. then a Latin style accompaniment. The last section of the book continues exploring bass lines and we play broken octaves and fifths in the bass and add syncopated chords with the right hand. You can explore a way of playing I call the thumb drum and create both a driving bass line and a syncopated bass line for the same song. Book 1B is useful to many people, but I should also mention for singers and songwriters so that they can accompany themselves. Book 2 is going to be out sometime in mid-2018. I'm just going to go over to the piano and give you a quick overview of this book. Okay, I'm back here at the piano. I'd like to give you an overview of book two of Puzzle Play. Like book one, it's got two parts. Part A that's about solo playing and part B that's about accompanying. So in part A, it's all about expanding the way we play chords with the left hand. So in book one, we just played chords in a closed hand position, but we're gonna to start to open that up. The first thing we're gonna do is play the note an octave above the bass note. So we might end up creating a sound like this. So then in part two, we're gonna to continue to open up the hand. We're gonna play what is called an open voicing or what I call a Chopin voicing. Instead of playing a chord like this, we're gonna take the middle note and put it up an octave. Now, a lot of people say, oh, my hand is too small to do something like that. So what I always say to them is you do not need a big hand to play this. If you even just have a finger, you can play it. And that's because of something called an arm that can move and something called a pedal that can hold the sounds all together. After we play with root position chords for a little bit, then we go into inversions. In section three, we begin to add more chord tones below the melody in the right hand. So we get a sound like this. Then in section four, we go back to expanding the left hand sound to do what's called a jump bass. So instead of playing a chord like this, we're gonna be playing the bass note down an octave. So we can get a sound like this. And then section five is all about new kinds of seventh chords. We begin by playing dominant seventh chords in more of a blues style. And then we start learning about major seventh chords and minor seventh chords. So that's 2A, which is all about solo playing. And then book 2B, as you guessed, is all about accompanying. We explore seventh chords and how to play them. We also explore something called slash chords. And 
finally, we explore styling, new ways of playing chords with the right hand. That's pretty much book two in a nutshell. Book three will explore seventh chords and diminished chords in the ways we explored with triads in book two, open voicings, jump bass, but then we'll also bring in arpeggios. Book four is about ninth, eleventh, and thirteenth chords, while book five will be all about the finer points of arranging and an exploration of more musical styles. You'll be able to get these books only at my website. Thanks for joining me and enjoy creating.